Example 5.17. In this example, a vein on wheels moves with a constant velocity v0 when a stream of water having a nozzle exit velocity v1 is turned 45 degrees by the vein. The speed of the water jet leaving the nozzle is 100 feet per second and the vein is moving to the right with a constant speed of 20 feet per second. The goal of the problem is to determine the magnitude and the direction of the force exerted by the stream of water on the vein surface. This case is a conservation of momentum for a control volume. However, the difference is that in this case, the control volume is moving. Therefore, when we define the equation, the velocity that we are going to use is going to be the relative velocity. However, the first step is for us to be able to identify the control volume for the problem. We're going to use the area that is going to go from the nozzle around the surface of the vein. And then we're going to simply go across like this. And this is going to be our control volume. We have two control surfaces, one that is going to be right at the entrance over here and the other one that is going to be right at the exit over here. The next step is to draw the different forces that are acting on this control volume. So we are going to have the reaction force that is going to take place. So we're just gonna take them as R, A, Z, and R, A, X. And we're also going to include the weight. Now we're going to use this expression and simplify it based on the information that we have. The first term is neglected because the problem is a steady. The second component, we are going to simplify it based on whether or not the relative velocity is constant at both of the control surfaces. For us to be able to determine that, we evaluate the fluid and the control volume velocity at the entrance and at the exit of the control volumes. We know that the fluid velocity is constant at this point and the control volume is moving at a constant speed. Therefore, we could say that the relative velocity at the entrance is the same. We also could do the same determination at the exit. Therefore, we could simplify this integral as simply the summation of all the relative velocities times the mass flow rates at each one of the control surfaces and that is going to be equal to the summation of all the forces. Please note that in order for us to be able to find the relative velocity we're going to use this equation in which the velocity of the fluid is equal to the relative velocity plus the velocity of the control volume. Therefore, for us to find the relative velocity, we find the velocity of the fluid minus the velocity of the control volume. And we're going to do that in both of the, uh, of the control surfaces. So we could uh, see that, for example, for W1 is going to be V.1 minus the control volume value. And we notice that the V1, which is the fluid velocity, is equal to the velocity of the fluid exit in the nozzle, which is equal to 100 feet per second. And the control volume velocity is equal to 20 feet per second. Therefore, the, the relative velocity W1 is equal to 80 feet per second. For us to be able to determine W2, we need to be able to find the fluid velocity in this part. Notice by conservation of mass, and since we maintain the same area throughout the flow that we have over here, we could say that the velocity V1 is equal to the velocity V2 that we're going to have over here. And we, if we do the same calculations, we're going to find that, that W1 is equal to W2, and once again, that is equal to 80 feet per second. Please note that this is the magnitude of the velocity. Since we have components, we will be able to find those for each 
axis that we're going to evaluate. So now let's once again substitute the information that we have into this equation and we're going to do it for both of the coordinate system x and z for the first and the second control surface. So we have w1 in the x coordinate and then that we have mass flow rate 1 and this is going to be w2 in the x coordinate and m2. For the signs we know that this is going to be positive because it's going into the direction positive for the x-axis and the mass flow rate is negative because it's in common into the control volume. This velocity is positive and then this is positive because it's going out of the control volume. This is going to be equal to the summation of the forces in the x-axis and we see from the graph that the only force that we have in the x-axis is R A X. We do the same analysis for the z-axis so we write W1 Z and 1 and then we do W2 Z M2 and that is going to be equal to RA Z minus the weight and we're going to put weight W to indicate that is the weight of the water. We're going to put the signs over here. This is going to be positive again, negative in common, positive and positive for outgoing. From the information that we have, we need to be able to determine the different components of the velocity and the mass flow rate so that we could plug it into the equation. So let's just start with the values of the velocity. W1x is going to be the whole component of W1 since the incoming velocity is in the x-axis. Therefore, it's going to be 80 feet per second. At the same time, W1z is going to be zero, once again, because all the component of W1 is in the x direction. W2x is going to be the magnitude, which is 80 feet per second, times the cosine of the angle of the vein, which in this case is 45 degrees. W2z is going to be, once again, the magnitude, which is 80 feet per second, times sine of 45. The next step is to find that the value of the mass flow rate. We know by conservation of mass that the mass flow rate at point 1 is equal to mass flow rate at point 2. And because we're dealing with a moving control volume, we're going to use relative velocity. So we write rho, either w1a1 or rho w2a2. So the only term that we're missing to calculate for us to replace into these quantities is the weight of the water. The weight of the water is simply going to be the mass of the water times the gravity. For us to calculate the mass of the water, we simply take the density times its volume, and once again we multiply it by gravity. The volume of the water is going to be this whole quantity that we have over here. From the original schematic of the problem, we know that the distance from the entrance to the exit is equal to one foot and we multiply it by the cross-sectional area to give us the volume. Therefore, we simply write rho A1 times the length times G. So we have all the quantities necessary for this. We're going to plug in all these values into these equations, and we're going to find that, that the value for our AX is going to be equal to 21.8 pounds and the value for RAZ is going to be equal to 53 pounds. This is in this direction and this is in this direction. For us to be able to obtain the whole magnitude of this resultant, 
we simply take the square root of both of the components in the x and in the y, I'm sorry, in the z, square it. And we find the magnitude to be 57.3 pounds. For us to be able to find the angle, we simply take the inverse tangent of the component in the z-axis divided by the component in the x-axis. And we find that the angle of this resultant vector is 67.6 from the horizontal. So it's somewhere in this direction like this. Please go back and calculate all the different variables, substitute into the main equation, and obtain these values.